Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is properties of sound waves. And we want to know what do the various properties of sound waves, like frequency, amplitude, wavelength, and speed, describe? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. An understanding of the properties of sound waves begins with the basics, with an understanding of the nature of a sound wave. I discussed this topic in a previous video, this one, and I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. I'm going to highlight four main points from that video that will form the foundation for understanding the properties of sound waves. The first one is that sound is created by a vibrating object, and it's the vibration of this, this object that forces disturbances into the medium that begin to move from one location to another location. Second, sound is a mechanical wave that propagates or moves through a medium by means of particle-to-particle -particle interaction. The vibrations of the source force a particle within the medium to vibrate about a fixed position. That particle interacts with its neighbor, forcing it to vibrate about a fixed position, which then interacts with its neighboring particle, forcing it to vibrate about a fixed position. The wave propagates to the medium by means of this particle-to-particle -particle interaction. Third, in fluids such as air, sound travels as a longitudinal wave. There's no crest or trough in a sound wave. Instead, there's regions where the particles are pressed together, and we call the, these compressions, and other regions where they're spread apart, and those are referred to as rarefactions. This pattern of alternating compressions and rarefactions is what we observe moving through the medium. Finally, a sound wave transports energy from one location to another without actually moving physical matter from the source to the surrounding area. Frequency is one property of a sound wave. In general, the word frequency refers to how often a periodic and repeating event repeats itself. It indicates the number of times the event occurs per second or per minute, per day, per year. If the event happens to be the orbit of the Earth about the Sun, we would describe its frequency as one time per year. For waves, the event happens to be a vibration of a particle about its fixed position. So for sound waves, frequency refers to how often a particle repeats one complete back and forth vibrational cycle. We measure it in cycles per time, such as cycles per second. An equivalent unit would be the unit Hertz, abbreviated HZ. One thing you can be certain of is that the vibrational frequencies of the particles of the v medium are perfectly synchronized with the vibrational frequencies of its source. So if the source of a sound wave is a tuning fork vibrating back and forth, then you can be certain that if the tines of the tuning fork vibrate back and forth 260 times per second, then every particle of the medium will vibrate back and forth 260 times per second. A sound's frequency is perceived as its pitch, a quality of sound that many of us are familiar with. A high-pitched sound is perceived of a high-frequency sound wave, and a low-pitched sound is perceived of a low-frequency sound wave. Humans can typically hear frequencies that are as low as 20 hertz and as high as 20,000 hertz. This is referred to as the audible range of human hearing. A sound with a frequency less than 20 hertz is an infrasonic sound, and a sound with a frequency greater than 20,000 hertz is an ultrasonic sound. Sound travels through fluids such as air as a longitudinal wave. The particles of the medium vibrate back and forth in a direction that is parallel and anti-parallel to the direction that the wave is traveling. So if a wave is traveling from a tuning fork as its source, to, from left to right, particles of the medium vibrate back and forth left to right and right to left. This creates compressions and rarefactions within the medium. This pattern of compressions and rarefactions is what we observe moving from the source to the surrounding regions. The amplitude refers to the maximum displacement of a particle from its rest position. So if I were to isolate a single particle and watch it vibrate from rest to a far right position, and then back to a far left position, and back to a far right position, and so forth, we would describe the amplitude as being the distance from the rest position to the far right position, 
or from the rest position to the far left position. Now, if I were to whisper, the particles of the medium would vibrate with a small amplitude. I'd be putting very little energy into the wave. There'd be very small amplitude, and you would perceive it as a soft, not loud sound. But if I were to holler, I would be putting a lot of energy into the wave. We would observe the amplitude to be significantly greater, and that sound would be perceived as a loud or intense sound. So high amplitude sounds are associated with sounds that transport a lot of energy and are perceived as loud, intense sounds. In general, wavelength is the length of a wave. It's the length of the repeating unit that's observed within the wave pattern. We typically think of it as the distance from crest to crest or the distance from trough to trough. But longitudinal waves like a sound wave moving through air don't have crests and troughs. Instead, they have compressions and rarefactions. Here we see a diagram of a longitudinal wave moving through a slinky. And the wavelength could be thought of as the distance from one compression to the next adjacent compression or just as equally the distance from a rarefaction to the next adjacent rarefaction. Wavelength and frequency are inversely related to one another. A high frequency sound wave is a short wavelength wave, and a low frequency sound wave is a long wavelength wave. The speed of sound, like the speed of any object, is the distance traveled per unit of time. It's the distance a compression of the sound wave would travel in some amount of time. The speed of sound is dependent upon the properties of the medium. One property would be the state of matter, solids, liquids, versus gases. We could assert that in general that the speed of sound within a solid is greater than that within a liquid and is greater than that within a gas. For instance, the speed of sound traveling through the solid aluminum is about 5100 meters per second, but the speed of sound traveling through the liquid water is about 1400 or 1500 meters per second, and for sound traveling through the gas air, it's about 340 or 350 meters per second. When it comes to a sound wave traveling through air, the main property that affects its speed would be the temperature, and we could write an equation that expresses the speed of sound in air as a a function of temperature. It would look something like this. The speed of sound is 331.6 meters per second plus 0.6 times the temperature in degrees C. If we were to substitute 20 degrees into this equation, we would get about 343.6 meters per second. The speed of sound is not dependent upon the frequency, wavelength, or amplitude of the sound wave and fully dependent upon the properties of the medium. For any type of wave, there is a mathematical relationship between the wave speed, the frequency, and the wavelength as given by this equation, V equal F times lambda. The speed of a wave is dependent upon the properties of the medium and unaffected by variations in the frequency, wavelength, or amplitude. So for a wave traveling through a uniform medium, we could say that the left side of this equation is a constant value and a variation of the frequency would not affect the speed, but in instead would affect the wavelength. For instance, a doubling of the frequency would cause the wavelength to increase by a factor of 2 while the speed remains constant, and a tripling of the frequency would cause the wavelength to decrease by a factor of 3 while the speed remains constant. And finally, a halving of the frequency would cause the wavelength to increase by a factor of 2 while keeping the speed constant. The frequency and wavelength are inversely related while the speed is constant within a uniform medium. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission on sound properties that would be perfect follow-up for this lesson. And you have a concept builder. And finally, there's a tutorial page that's great for brushing up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.